Whatever happens, just let Levi be all right. Let Levi be all right. His fingers are not attached to his hand. He's okay, though. This looks bad. It looks bad. No, no. No, he's not. Oh, she's saving him. She's saving him. Yes. No, no, you don't, we don't need that. You can just go. Hanji can be trusted. Oh, thank God. Thank God for Stomach Titan. Levi being saved by a Titan. Is that Zeke? Did they just rejuvenate Zeke? You're telling me that Levi is harmed and, and Zeke is at full full health? This is not what I wanted. This is the opposite of what I wanted. I also did not want Zeke ass. Get out of there with Levi. Yes! Thank you. Even at this late stage, still lots of questions. This was a dream. The beacon, the light beacon. Please put on some clothes. Is this the final opening? Oh my god, I can't believe it. I can't believe it's Attack on Titan. I can't believe this is happening. Wow. Very interesting tone in the song already. Here we go, the final, final season. The actual final season. <laughs> birds! Now what story is this opening telling? They all tell a story. Birds. Yeah. They're terrible. Hate them. Yeah, this battle was about to break out at the end of the last episode. Annie! I've been waiting for four seasons for her to come back. Three seasons. Looking pretty amazing. Is it the last scout holdout? The scarf and the three of them as children. That was an awesome transformation right there. And a broken insect to end it. Sort of perfect. I was thinking before I started watching, it's going to be hard to deliver. The openings in the show have been so fantastic. So amazing. I feel like as good as they started, they only got better and more intricate as time went on. Obviously, Brett's one, one of my favorites. And I've been listening to the season four opening song for like a week in preparation. Mental preparation. Because the show is literally like going to war. And this is my last one. At least as far as this show is concerned. I feel like the actual meaning of the opening will take shape more as I watch this season. But the tone of it seems to be like rage. There's this really aggressive side to it. And that fits because of Eren and the fact that we're literally about to enter into an all-out war. And the pain comes through really well. Not just through the song, but through flashes of Eren like literally in pain. But then there's also a sadness to it. Like a feeling of loss, naivety, and regret. And there's even flashes of them as children echoing some of the ideas and messages of Red Swan. So overall another instant classic I'd say. Which is impressive considering the fact that this show had really really big shoes to fill in terms of the intros. And it doesn't hurt that I'm just super pumped to see how this unfolds because there's just so much so much build up. I mean as an opening song they could have had someone playing the triangle and I would have been pumped anyway. Judgment. You know I was bracing myself for pain but we already got a win. Levi is alive. Here we go. And this is Eren with like a lot of the powers. It is time for Aaron and Reiner to settle this in the only way Aaron and Reiner know how. With naked wrestling. <laughs> right. This weirdly endearing moment, but I trust in my comrades and their blimps. In this crazy world, at least we have comrades. How do you feel as Reiner going into this having lost so many times to Aaron, who is now as powerful as he's ever been and more convicted than he's ever been? And this decides it, right? This decides the war and the future. I mean, I'm actually amazed he managed that kind of precision. I'm so busy thinking about the Reiner fight. I'm sleeping on Galliard. And there she is in all her duck glory. I'll be back with accessories. They have different opinions about the edges they have. Eren seems overly confident, very confident. Eren still knows a lot that I don't know. Here we go. Man, does this feel amazing. Wow. 
feels very familiar. There's something so amazing about Reiner flying into Paradise, Paradiso, yet again, you know, for the 800th time, because of how different it feels this time and what it's connected to. Like, he's riding with Marley, but it doesn't feel to me like he's here for Marley. This is not a, a war. He's fighting anymore to, you know, win a military victory, or at least that's not the full extent of it. Like, for me, it feels like he's, he's here for Gabby, or he's here for the kids. And there's just so much in there in that arrival, because his presence is largely what launched launched Aaron in this whole journey and got us to this point and he's got to know his responsibility for that but he's here for Gabby and to me it seems like Gabby is in some way or another a representation of like a future Aaron you know like the new Aaron the, the new beginning of the cycle so there's some element of like emotional and personal closure that comes from that and also a feeling of connectedness that's more authentic you know it's not a result of over drinking of the Marley Kool-Aid but he's not the only one I mean Aaron as much as his overall plan is still sort of unclear to me is just as connected for better or for worse and man do they have history are these the accessories? We've come a long way from like peak basket. You're still alive somehow. He got hit with a wine. Yeah, in the world's strangest form of blackmail. Aaron does feel very confident in what he's doing. He still needs the connection to the royal bloodline, right? And that could be Zeke. It could also be Astoria, or Astoria's baby. <laughs> Look at this thing. <laughs> Look at this. Giant cannon. Right. Right, the world too. The world and, and the children. I'm not sure that's the solution. I feel like that just kicks it, kicks it down the road. You always gotta make sure the person's on your side. Have you tried hugging? Wow. Yeah, this is not the same. Aaron. He's not even using the full extent of his powers. Right, but he's not alone. Speaking of extent of his powers. If you think Aaron's gonna give up, you haven't been paying attention. <laughs> I remember when I hated hated Duck Titan. I still haven't totally forgiven her. But she's just had so many key moments. And then a card, which is actually relevant. <laughs> Sort of bringing the show full circle in a way since cannons were so useless in the beginning of the show. Oh my god, oh my god, what is happening? I mean, this is going well for Marley. That is damn true. One of the weird and kind of cool ambiguities about the first part of season four is what the effects of things are and what is the right move in terms of consequences. Because Aaron wiped out the military leaders, among many other people, in Willie Tiber's most boring show of all time. And in doing so, weakened the army, but then also made the Marlians correct about parodies, parody so. So it's not really a surprise they were able to rally up people to come and fight. Also, I mean, just on a practical level, we've seen that Marley is literally a war machine. Aaron was talking about how it's foolish that the Marleyans attacked so soon, and he obviously has a you know some cards up his sleeve that I don't know about. But was he not also acting on emotion, attacking Reiner? Like there's obviously a really long standing hatred between the two of them. But I can't help but wonder if there's also some weird need that Aaron has for Reiner, like needing him to be what he wants him to be, which is someone who is as trapped as Aaron is, you know, speaking of freedom. What makes me wonder that is they had a conversation in the basement under Willie Tiber's most boring play of all time, where Aaron seemed to suggest that Reiner was like him and that he was just sort of on rails, like there's no choice, right? But Reiner seems to have made choices recently, maybe for the first time, like actual independent autonomous cho choices. And I don't know how aware Aaron is of that, but I feel like there's an existential threat perhaps for people who can sort of step one layer above things, the cycle of hell that a lot of the characters are experiencing. Not that Reiner's traveled very far out of that cycle of hell, but he's definitely shifted rungs, at least. Whereas my feelings about Aaron, somewhat controversially, are that to a large extent he's resigned himself. Even in taking action, there's a feeling of like giving up. He seems to get farther and farther out of the walls, but also somehow less and less free. <laughs> Oh, 
Yeah, this terrible play was a success in its way. No, we've seen this before. We've seen Dormant. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> That's for damn sure. Interesting level of compassion there. Speaking of turning a corner. Yeah, it's, it's all sort of going down right now, outside. You're missing it. Yeah, I mean, Marley getting the founder is not good either. This is probably true. Tell him, Connie. <laughs> There's something really excellent about this, that they're sort of reaping the fruits of this, because they fell to rhetoric. In their state of confusion and fear, they were fed this tale, you know, that there was a savior. And of course, amongst this group, you know, amongst this rebel faction, there's going to be all sorts of varying motivations, some that are really selfish and impure, and some that actually are really beautiful. But the point is, they all sort of align towards this cause, and they end up empowering this thing that they have no control over. And if that just isn't the truth, you know, like, if that isn't how social movements spread, because that emotion drives so much action, but that action tends to consolidate towards people with power and then you're sort of like just at the whim of who that power goes to i think a mistake that a lot of people make when thinking about what they perceive the results of the movements to be is that they over identify their own role in it and they think that they'll have more power than they actually will have i was thinking about this while watching a korean movie that depicted the war between the north and the south and you see people showing up to these like north korean rallies these pro north korean regime rallies and you can just feel the passion in their hearts and the belief that it's the right thing and perhaps there is a desire in there to feel righteous and be on the right side but there's also a desire to right wrongs and fix injustices and improve society, right? And it's such a weird feeling to watch that and see that energy, which has some really beautiful things in it, and then compare that to what I know the results to be of that, of that war and that regime. And it's just bizarre to think that people created their own hell through beautiful dreams. You know, it's kind of frightening and it's scarily easy. I mean, there's just so many easy tools to emotion, protecting the weak, playing to an idea that one is on the good side, you know, because we all want to have that positive self-identity, pointing to a villain class, which sounds obvious on its surface, but in my experience talking to people, just about everyone today believes in a villain class, which is always, always 100% a chance to gain power. Someone else made that enemy class. It's not a real thing. There is no enemy class. And so you get these people among them, many really wonderful people who later are faced with the reality that they have just supported euthanization, as they're calling it. Although I think it's just sterilization, right? And it's too late. Like, there's no dialing that back. It's a fantasy tale, but as always, I feel like there, there's just so many real societal mechanisms that are depicted in the show. Yeah, so I, I believe him. <laughs> Armin generally has good sense. Right. He just put his faith in the people above him and he's just unlucky that it's Zeke, you know? That's how that goes. It's time to get out of this factionism. It's just time to get out of this factionism. New unit. It's a lot to consider. The rumbling. I feel like you also don't want the rumbling to happen. Although I feel like it will happen. It's more than that too. It's probably just a whole bunch of things. And they're also, I mean, like brother and sister basically. I don't know, but... I feel like she's been shown to have a power from the beginning. I don't think he's being being used by Zeke. I don't think he's totally on board with Zeke's plan. He has his own thing. I love how Armin still has faith in his, his friend, even after what they've been through recently. Right, and I feel like it's sort of antithetical to his ideas of freedom and like being livestock and having, you know, divine birthright and all that. But that's optimistic thinking he'll stop there. I don't feel like the rumbling would be a warning if Aaron did it. It would be like the rumbling. The full the full rumbling, all of it. A lot of decisions to make in this room. Elena's a true fan, huh? <laughs> Always has been. This is insane. This is war. There's that Reiner Aaron hugging action we've all been waiting for for years. 
No, no, no. Well, at least we have another ending to do. Kid Aaron. Kid Aaron with scarf and knife. Very interesting choice. Scarf. And turn into a bird? Of course. Got my eye on, on you, bird. This is all Aaron. This is the Aaron show. The Aaron ending. Aaron's smiling. It's like Aaron's fantasy of freedom. The outside world. Engulfed in flames and vanishing. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, I don't feel like Aaron makes it out of the season alive. Unless it's like a weird time cycle thing. Back to that again. <laughs> Never gonna give that up. There's two things I'm confident in in the show. Is that it's a time cycle and that the female Titan is Mikasa. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm pumped. Oh man, it just feels so good. It just feels so good to be back. There's just so many great things about it. Like, it's really cool that even now at this late stage, despite having all these reveals, there's still a lot of questions. There's still a lot to wrap up. There's still intrigue. I'm really, really, really curious what Eren's plan is and what the final assessment will be in his character because he's so complex. And also just seeing where everyone else will fall. I think there's a lot of opportunity, as I said in the first half of season four, for people to sort of like step up and be something other than what is the obvious binary side you know there's a lot of options here the way that a lot of things have been framed it's a and b it's this against this but in reality there's c through z what makes it thrilling and terrifying to think about it that way is that there are just so many ways it can go wrong and not many ways it can go right there's just so much power at stake and there's just so much of a presence out to get that power for what is you know probably terrible means that it makes the few individuals you know actually thinking about it and and calculating and trying to navigate this on the fly against all odds seem doomed to fail but that in itself creates such a huge opportunity for some really spectacular heroism you know so for some really spectacular character strength which is what i live for i feel so much love for this little ragtag group of leftover scouts you know like they're the last holdouts of like this for forgotten era where it felt righteous where it really was about protecting humanity all of humanity there was no malice it was just we're in this together as comrades with our back against the wall against an unstoppable group of human eating monstrosities so many terrible things have happened you know the the cruelty of the world is real but we're still here i already know that this final final season is gonna be amazing but there's a, a couple of things i'm really looking forward to the most one as i said is Eren. i mean he's been fighting this war since the beginning you know he's been fighting not only the titans but just like mediocrity and apathy and slavery in the way he framed things and tragedy and trauma so what is his resolution you know like how does he end the fight does he get what he wants i suspect that it'll be a mixed bag i suspect it'll be yes but also no i'm looking forward to a lot of these characters that i've grown to love and who have not lost themselves in all this tragedy stepping up and sort of closing their arcs or bringing resolution to their arcs and one of the, the people i'm most excited about that for is Levi, who's not in great shape right now. He could perhaps use a hand. There's a parallel with Erwin. But there's an opportunity for him in leadership, like grand leadership and not just a squad. While he's someone who, counter to initial expectations, has been shown to be someone who cares quite a bit, you know, really, really cares deeply. He sort of had this trait of like not really being committed in certain key ways, you know, sort of not knowing where he stood, being flexible, doing the best he could at any given moment, maybe not wanting to be in position to decide the fate of others, being somewhat sentimental. I mean, like how many times has he been punished now for not killing Zeke? This is the third time, right? Not really resisting Eren other than like, you know, kicking him in the face a couple times as he's wont to do. But what if Levi, and this is just sort of a fanfic at this point, heals and comes back to lead this, this squad of like Mikasa, Kani, Armin, John, John. That would sort of be incredible to me, but I mean, who knows? So yeah, I can't believe we're here. That's the end of the first episode of the second half of season four and the, the final, final part. See you guys next time when a few brave soldiers honor the legacy of Erwin Smith in the past by stomping all over Flish Flash. <laughs>